Bob, welcome to, to Habeas Swifts. Uh, how would you describe your first impressions of, of the club that you've uh, joined? Um, well, firstly, night, I thought it was excellent. The training, the setup. Um, to come from Chelmsford to Haybridge, on how we used to do things at Chelmsford, Haybridge, with what Cliff's done and the other coaches around, it's been very, very good. Uh, today's excellent here at the barracks. You know, uh, Pete's put up a good session. Um, all round, it's uh, pleasing to see all the young lads that are here. And uh, that's been entertaining. Some of the young lads have really worked hard today and they worked hard on Thursday. Totally enjoyable. How will you look back on your time at Chelmsford City? Because you weren't just a coach, you, you did all sorts of tasks, didn't you? You, um, you were pop, probably in the kit room, maybe, or you were out on the pitch, or if there was a danger that there was going to be a, a match called off because of the pitch, you were out there? There was loads of things I've done. I went there as uh, under-14s manager and went all the way through to 18s. 18s to reserve team manager. Uh, then with the first team with Glenn Pennyfather and Jeff King, which was absolutely amazing experience. Then when Jeff left, took over doing the pitch. From there it became a full-time thing when it was only temporary. Um, the pitch was in a shocking condition, but we got it round to where it was, to where Adrian's took it over. Um, but the, the, the whole ethos of mine at football, I've been in football a long time. I've done kids and girls. I've uh, done my badges up until B badge and it's just been, it's been exciting times since it was there. Um, I, I had a good time but the last two years wasn't as good as it should have been from the Dean Holdsworth and it just went, for me I, it lost its passion for me. So coming here and I can uh, put the ethos that I've had in my own football life and coaching into Haybridge Swifts with Cliff. And bearing in mind, Cliff was my coach for 18 months when I was reserve team manager and he was a player in the first team. So, yeah, it's exciting times and Cliff's got the right idea, Mark's got the right idea and the other coaches and I think Haybridge could go a long way. Chelmsford have got quite a catchment area of, of people to tap into and quite a few rooftops as well. What, what do you think the secret to success will be uh, for Haybridge Swifts uh, looking ahead to the future? Because obviously you'll be, you'll be aware of a new stadium uh, plan which is on the absolute brink now and um, trying to gain more people to come into the club both financially and also supporters. Well the thing that I found when I announced that I was coming here the support I got from the fans was absolutely amazing, the Chelmsford City fans. And then the people at Haybridge have been marvellous to me, but Haybridge have got a lot. As a manager in, been a manager around Chelmsford for some time, if you ever picked a Haybridge Swift side, whether you're picking a Haybridge Swift side at under sixes to the main team, they're always a hard game there. It's always a good team that's going to come out. You always had to work hard to beat them. And if not, they would have you over. And Haybridge have got a good catchment area of their own. They've had good philosophies in their youth set up and all the way through. And I just think if I can help that a little bit with Cliff and move on, there's a lot of good managers around um, within Haybridge Swifts. I just think it can move on. Um, with the new ground coming, that is... That's a nice little, that there is quite important to a lot of young players is can I get out there in that main stadium and if it's built beautifully and 3G and 4G now are the way to go, they want to just make sure they put a water sprinkler system in it because it does get hot on your feet. <laughs> you, you, won't, you won't have grown up with those pictures as, no. as many people won't have done, so, so what's your opinion of them? Um, I've played on them. Even at my grand old age, I played on them and trained on them. They're good. They've got a per they've got a place to play in non-league football and a little bit above, because non-league football needs the financial resources that can generate of renting it out and what have you. But even 3G, 4G pitches, there's a lot of maintenance still need to be done on it. It's not just like this piece of grass here; they go dry and you water them and that. They need maintenance as well. But you, the income is all year round. I think it's brushing them every 10 hours of football, isn't it? Or yeah, you need to brush them. You need to brush them either way as well because you need the blaze to go the right way. So there's a lot to it, but it's not hard. It's not rocket science, but it is, it is the way to go for clubs 
especially in Ryman North, Ryman Prem, possibly even in the conference south and that, to have these pitches, to be able to play really all year round. Yeah, Sutton United are getting one. Um, as, a, as a coach, where do you think you'll complement things with uh, the rest of the, the coaching staff and with Gavin and Mark and, and, and Cliff? And what will you be looking out for? Have you got a particular thing that you think that you've got a strength that you want to be able to, to bring to the table and say, well, I want to look out for such and such? Um, well, I know what Cliff wants me to do. He, he wants me to look at players. He knows that I know a good young player when I see one. Um, he wants me to actually work with him with the young players. There's players that are very shy and some people just don't give them a second chance. He's bringing out the good side of them young players. They've all got it. A lot of them have got a lot of ability, but they don't have the desire or they don't have the confidence to push on. Now my role is to be with Cliff, is to have a look at all these boys that need that help and experienced players that need to go what I've learned from the Conference South. And the Conference South is quite a, a step up but when they get there, it's, it's a good place to go to see if you can go into league football or are you just going to be workman light and stay around the Ryman League, North or the uh, South or the Premiership of it, if you're going to hang around there. But my role is I hope I can contribute with the knowledge I've got of players and the knowledge I've got of the game. And that's important, the knowledge. Because I'm yep. not interested in hit and run football all the time. My football, even all my youth sides, all my reserve sides could play football. They could hoof it if they wanted it or if they can play it round you. And I want that same philosophy to be in the first team, the reserves and the 18s. And then they can get a steamroller of players. Players that move on. It's like Joe Ward when Mark Hawks went to Chelmsford. I picked his team for his first, first game against Staines after we lost 6-0, 5-0, 4-0, 3-0, we win 3-1 against all the odds. Put young Joe Ward in and now Joe Ward, he's done a season a bit, he's been sold, he's gone on to Brighton. But if they hadn't have given him the chance right that day, they wouldn't have seen what he'd done. And that's my job to try and convince managers to do that. And a lot of young players don't get the opportunity. And, and how would you describe the, um, the the training session here, the the standard of the training session that's been adopted here uh, today, compared to your experience in in the conference? Um, all clubs have got different training techniques. All of them. Chelmsford's training technique, I have to be honest, hasn't been as what I've seen the last few years. Hasn't been as hard as this. It's been half. It's been progression. They start off lightly and build it up, and then they come down to where they're just getting games in but they've built the fitness up through a period of weeks, three or four weeks and then they start kicking the friendlies in and then they go from there. This for the lads here that will get them fit and then they're getting to the games and pre-season training won't be as hard as what they've had now for the last two days. There's another couple of sessions like this and they should be ready and there is some good talent here there's some determination from a lot of the young lads here to get round and do this circuit. You've probably got pictures on there of it. It's been hard for some of these boys. Well, all of them, I think. <laughs> well, fortunately, it's got a little bit cooler now. Yeah. Um, no doubt there'll be one pre-season friendly that you'll be looking out for. But in terms of the Colchester game, you're talking about full-time professionals, aren't you? And it's always a, a, a big day for a non-league side to play a football league side, even in a pre-season friendly and, and these players that turn out for Colchester United they're, they're paid they're um, they paid a lot of money and it's day in day out for them whereas non-league is, is very different that, that's a big day out for for any non-league player even in pre-season isn't it well yeah well, I, I was lucky I experienced Chompton City beating Colchester in the FA Cup I was on the pitch everything and it was fantastic we never believed we could do it and that'd be the same there the young players here playing Colchester against full-time pros, it, sh it shouldn't, people like me and Cliff, Cliff and myself I should say, and um, Gavin, we should be able to put across to them boys, don't be frightened of them, because they're only footballers like themselves, and if you compete on equal terms, which you are, we should do quite well. It's not about the result, it's about what you learn from them. If you can learn something from them, if you can come away losing 2-1 or 
or, or three two or something like that or even if you've nicked a win or nicked a draw it's good but you must learn from it it's no point playing Colchester and you don't learn nothing from it you need to learn where you are as a player and where the team is um, what do you think it would mean to, to Cliff and the rest of the, the, the team, including yourself, to, to go out and, and give a promotion push a really big go th this year? Because obviously Cliff came in and did a marvellous job in sort of, what, four, four or five months towards the end of last season when the club could have been in, in relegation trouble. But this is his first pre-season, isn't it? And this is a big um, platform for, for him and, and his team. Yeah, I, I think... If the season start, even if the season starts off a little bit shaky till the boys have settled in, um, I think the possibilities of the playoff and more is there. But then you've got to have a look what's in this league, and I think the way Cliff's philosophy is, and the way the coaching staff and that is, that we should be there or thereabouts. If we do finish in the playoffs, great. If we can win the playoffs, that'd be brilliant. And if you win the league, well. We all dance around and we scream and we shout and we have a beer and do all the things that are right about it. But I think the opportunities for Haybridge are as good as what they had years ago. Um, especially, there's something for all the players to play for now. This new ground, new facilities is something that if you do well this year, you're going into a new ground. You can do a Maidstone, you can do all what other clubs have gone into 3G pitches. And then all of a sudden you push on and you will get more supporters. I already know from Chelmsford City, from that time, and I shouldn't drop that name in, but I know so many fans when Chelmsford are away, and they've got a lot of away journeys that are long and tedious. A lot of the fans will be coming to Haybridge Swifts. They've already told me, when, we're away, when Chelmsford are away and we're at home, they'll be coming down here to see. So we might put an extra 10 or 20 on a gate or 30, we don't know. Don't put too many ga names on the gate. <laughs> yeah, no, I won't be putting any names on the gate. I'm not like that. Uh, nobody gets a free ride on Bobby Batch. <laughs> OK. Um, is it is it frightening that Harlow got 103 points last season and didn't, didn't go up? Oh, that's sad. That is... As a, ma if, as a manager and a coach, you would be pretty upset on that yourself you won't be upset with your players you you'd be thinking to yourself what did I do wrong as a manager and a coach because that's a hell of achievement 103 points it, it wouldn't it such a, an occurrence wouldn't happen in the football league would it I mean you would go up <laughs> with 103 points you'd, you, you'd have you're gone champions up. Yeah. you're champions there's no two ways about it you're champions but it swung on that day didn't it they were promoted then they were in the playoffs then they were promoted in the playoffs and then they play in the playoffs and they go out and it's what they've done on the day you know it's like a cup game like you said earlier to me it's a cup game but Harlow are going to be a strong force this year so 103 points says what Hapridge Swifts and many other teams have got to compete with and, and, and do you think the standard of Ryman League football has been growing in, in recent years? I know there was a season when, uh, when, when Chelmsford could have been in relegation trouble and, and their supporters were, were frightened that they could go down. But I suppose that comes from a number of years of, of being conference. But has the standard of Ryman League football in, increased? Obviously, there's going to be less money because it, it, it's the yeah. way of life, isn't it? It's business and football. The higher you go, uh, the, the better players, the more money, the, the, the bigger crowds. Yeah, it's when when I first joined the first team at Chelmsford, I was with Jeff King, and we was in the Ryman Prem then. So we I've experienced, if you want, the players' budget that was going around in them days for all clubs, not just Chelmsford. All clubs was quite high in the Ryman Prem because everybody wants to get out of it. But once we got into the South, the budget there is still quite massive, a lot of clubs spend a huge amount of money on their budgets until they're out of the FA Cup. When they're out of the FA Cup and the trophy, players then are released and gone. But the Ryman League, having been a reserve team manager and played quite a few sides from the Ryman League, um, the, their philosophy is good, and, it, uh, and I mean it's good, the football's getting better. Um, I went and watched quite a few games last year, I went and watched in actual fact, I watched probably 10 or 12 games and I was impressed with some of the clubs and some of the standards. And there's a lot of good players out there waiting to step up. But there's a lot of good players in there that don't want to step up. They stay around that level. So the Ryman League has got a major 
major thing to play in, in local football for everybody. And um, it is enjoyable. Um, there is some clubs that hang on the fringes of it and there's other clubs that are fairly wealthy and well organised. And with Haybridge Swifts, when they get their new ground and that, I'm sure that's going to be a major plus for them.